Hey friends, Isaac here. It's Tuesday, May 24th. Welcome to the Living the Dream Show with Kevin White. Kevin is a best-selling author, international speaker, and global brand publisher. He's founder, executive director of Global Hope India, and CEO of Spirit Media. Spirit Media. As a serial entrepreneur, Kevin has helped start hundreds of churches, businesses, and nonprofits throughout the world. Before starting today's episode, Kevin asked me to make sure you've heard about the Writers Club with Kevin White. Kevin just finished writing his third book in three years. He can help you write your first or next book. The Writers Club with Kevin White is a weekly small group via Zoom with writers for accountability and structure through coaching and collaboration. Learn more at spiritmedia.us. That's spiritmedia.us. Today, Kevin is joined by Temsala Bass of Nashville, North Carolina. Temsala is a sister in Christ, friend and board member for Global Hope India. Put your hands together and let's welcome Kevin and Temsala to today's show. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Live in the Dream show. I am Kevin White. I'm here with my sister and friend, Timsala, how are hey. you? Yeah. Good. If you're watching on YouTube, we're actually waving at you right now. If you're listening wherever podcasts can be heard, we're so honored to have you in the audience today. Timsala has given many high fives on the yeah. on the yes. camera. Um, and so we are just so full of joy and gratitude. We're talking about gratitude. We're actually yes. in a series. So today is May the 24th. It's the day before my birthday. And so I'm excited about that. But I have... Birthday. Yeah, thank you. I have many things to be thankful for, and I'm I'm actually really excited about this series that we're in on prayer. Uh, it's based out of First Corinthians chapter five. I'm sorry, First Corinthians, First, First Thessalonians, Thessalonians. <laughs> Thessalonians chapter five, verses seventeen through eighteen. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstance, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Last week we talked about a lifestyle of prayer, and today we just want to dive into the reality that we need prayer, and that mm -hmm. the people who come into our lives are in need of prayer as well. Uh, they might be coming saying, can you give me a job or can you help me uh, financially? Or maybe they're not even asking anything. They may just be serving us in a restaurant or something, but you're never going to encounter anyone that doesn't need prayer. That's the whole point of today's episode. Timsala, what's on your mind uh, as we look at the need for prayer? You know, I just wanted to share a very short story. About a couple of weeks ago, a person came to my husband and, you know, wanting to find uh, work and asking for help to find work. Mm -hmm. He was willing to do anything so that he can get, he was a teenager and he just needed some money to, because it was his birthday that day. Mm -hmm. Nate, God moved in his heart to help this young man. And anyway, going forward, after we had conversations and all that, he shared that that day before he stepped out, you know, as he stepped out of his home, he prayed that God will help him to find somebody that will help him. Mm. It because it was his birthday and he needed some money to go out and eat. And he prayed mm -hmm. and he said, I don't know whether he knows Jesus or not, but he said that he prayed to God to help him. Mm -hmm. And Nate happened to meet him and we had some, you know, he helped him. And later on, we had some spiritual conversation mm -hmm. and we prayed together. And we wished him a happy birthday. But he, this young man also got to see, you know, how firsthand, how God works. Mm -hmm. And when you ask, like the scripture says in Matthew, ask and it shall be given. Seek and you will find. And that's how it was. And so, yeah, we have been talking this so for several weeks about prayer and why it is so important to pray mm -hmm. why you know we should continue to pray without 
uh, seizing. And not just that, the next part is um, in all circumstances, give thanks. Mm -hmm. And so we can dive in a little bit about what it means, mm -hmm. you know, praying and giving thanks. Yeah. And, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, right there is one thing that we can pray for, and that is just to give thanks. I really appreciate you sharing that story. The example that it sets for us that we should be very careful about thinking of gifts and value and minimizing the value of prayer. And we might think, okay, well, this $2 is more valuable than prayer or helping someone with their uh, housing is more valuable than prayer. Mm -hmm. There's actually a verse in the Bible where the disciples were coming out of temple and a beggar was laying there and they said, silver and gold, we do not have, but what we have, we give you in the name of Jesus, stand up and walk. And the man was healed. That was worth way more than if they would have just dropped some coins into the beggar's cup that day. And you mm -hmm. and I have way more to offer people than just what's in our wallets. We should yes. open up our wallets at times. We should be uncomfortable financially at times. We should... Mm -hmm give the extras that we have. If we have two coats, the Bible says, and someone needs one, then we should give up our coat. If mm -hmm. we have two phones and someone needs a phone, we should give up our phone. But that never means a substitute for prayer. And so mm -hmm. one of the first things, you know, Paul is saying, live a lifestyle of prayer, always give thanks. So you can give thanks for the strangers that you meet. You can give thanks to people of other passports. You can give thanks for people with other heritages. One of the things mm -hmm. that's going to heal our land of bias and prejudice and hatred is to start giving thanks for people that are different than us and give thanks for people that we have the opportunity to expose them to the one true God, um, mm -hmm. that, that God has brought them from a foreign land to a place where they can be exposed to Jesus. You know, there are nearly 8 billion people alive today and statistically over 3 billion don't have access to know about Jesus. We can't mm -hmm. comprehend that. I'm here in the, what's considered the Bible belt of, of the USA with a church on every corner. Well, the reality is, the U.S. population is only 4% of the entire world population. And so 96% live outside the U.S. And there are many places like India and the Middle East and Asian countries where there is not a church on every corner. Some of those churches are older traditional churches that don't necessarily use Bibles or don't honor Jesus. We should give thanks every time we see someone of a different skin color, a different language, a different passport. If you are in the Bible Belt, for instance, and you see foreigners, you should you we should be praising God with such joy. Wow, look at Almighty God. He brought them here to, to meet Jesus so that they could have access to Jesus because we just take it for granted what we have access to. Um, if you're in a place of freedom spiritually that you can worship without the threat of being murdered because you call out upon the name of Jesus, you should be giving thanks for your religious freedom. But also if you see people of other passports that they are now in a place where they could freely seek Jesus. And I could go on and on and on. What, what comes to mind as far as needs for us to give thanks, Temsala? Well, one of the, th I mean, there are so many things that comes to my mind about our need to give thanks. I mean, just giving thanks to God should also just be a natural thing that comes out from our mouth daily because everything that we are, everything that we have, uh, it's from the Lord. It's a blessing. And so we should be giving thanks unto the Lord. Other things that, you know, when it's easy to give thanks to God, when things are going our way, mm -hmm. Kevin, mm -hmm. it's easier for me personally. Yeah. Me too. Uh, 
so easy to just give thanks to God, mm -hmm. praise to God when things are going my way and how things, you know, how I perceive it should go. Or, But when things are not going my way, uh, I struggle with giving thanks mm -hmm. to God. Mm -hmm. When I'm sick, I don't want to say, you know, Lord, thank you for this sickness. Mm -hmm. Right. I don't want to say that. Or mm -hmm. when things are not going the way that, you know, you perceive it should, then I don't want to give thanks. Instead, I complain, Lord, why is this sickness? Or why are these foreigners here? I don't mm -hmm. want to see them. Why are these people here? Mm -hmm. There are so many reasons that comes up to my mind why I should not give thanks to God. Yeah. Yeah. Without realizing that the scripture very clearly talks about and that even Paul talks about in Romans 8, 28, all things work together for those, uh, for good, for those who love the Lord. Mm. And Praise the Lord. he, God works everything together for good for his people. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we don't realize that. I don't necessarily want to say thank you, God, for sickness and for this and that, but I have also learned that during um, circumstances and situations like that, God has brought me to look at prioritize things that I would not have learned otherwise. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I have learned to take it in a positive way. Yeah. It might, I might struggle with it, but it is okay. God has taught me lessons after lessons during hard times to give thanks to him mm -hmm. because at the end it turned out okay mm -hmm. at the end it turned out for good mm -hmm. and that's what he promises each one of us that it will work out together you know it's for good it's just like in jeremiah 29 11 he said that everything it's it's planned to give us peace mm -hmm. It's a good plan, not an evil plan. And it's just that sometimes when we don't understand, we fail to give thanks. And so personally, I'm like, you know, all of us, whoever is our listeners, don't fail to give thanks to God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Amen. And that's really the message of today's episode is that we need prayer and one of those one of those things that we can pray about is thanksgiving i hope that we both timsala and i have given you very practical things that you can give thanks for and yeah she's exactly right sometimes it's not easy if we woke up on even any given day and allowed our emotions to dictate our prayer life we would probably very rarely pray Either we're not going to feel like praying or we're going to feel as if we don't need to pray. Either we're feeling so good, we don't need prayer, or we're feeling so bad, we don't want to pray. And so if we allow our emotions to influence us and drive our habit of prayer, we may not get there. And so allow the Word of God to really be what, what motivates you and mm. Paul says, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. So if you know you need to pray, check, I do, Timsala does, you do, check, mm -hmm. then, then what do we need to pray for? And the very next thing out of Paul's mouth is give thanks. What do you need to pray for? Give thanks. And you know, we could have sat here on this episode and said, all right, we're going to we're going to spend some time at the end praying. And so let's just go over all of our prayer needs. And you'll hear that we can go to church and there's nothing wrong with listing out prayer needs. OK, I'm not judging. I'm not condemning. I am just saying that we could sit here and there is a lot of issues in the world today that we need to cover in prayer. And they're all pertinent to prayer. The abortion mm -hmm. issue in the USA, pertinent to prayer. What's happening in Ukraine, pertinent to prayer. The COVID crisis in China, pertinent to prayer. We could go on and on, global warming, on and on and on. There's all these needs for prayer and they're all true. 
and we need to pray. But Paul says, pray continually, give thanks. And I want us to hear that point, that one of the needs we have for prayer is we need to pray prayers of thanksgiving. And so we're going to do that right now. So will you bow with me in prayer? I want to thank God for you, and I want to give thanks for all of us. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this episode. Thank you for this challenge to pray, this opportunity, this gift of prayer that we can close our eyes, bow our heads, and recognize we are right in your presence. There's no place we can go outside of your presence. And this is true of people listening in Afghanistan, listening in Israel, listening in India, in Northeast India, in the UK, in the USA, Mexico, Canada, everywhere we are bowing our head, we can come into your presence, we can call upon the name of Jesus. And I just wanna say thank you for everyone that is praying with us right now. I thank you for uh, Tim Sala and for her marriage. And I thank you for my marriage. I thank you, Father, for our families. And I thank you for the show. And I thank you for the presence of Almighty God that helps us in our times of trouble. And I thank you that you are a faithful God. You are a healer. You are a provider. You are a comfort, your protector. And we just want to give you thanks. We thank you that we're living in a day when people of other heritages are moving into places where they can have access to know about Jesus. Let this be a day of salvation. We thank you for salvation. We thank you for the Holy Spirit. We thank you for Bibles. We thank you for evangelism. We thank you for churches and for pastors. And we pray that you would guide all of these to finish the task of the Great Commission that more and more people could come uh, to Jesus today, that more and more people would call upon the name of Jesus for salvation. With gratitude, we say thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We'll see you back next week here on the yes. Live in the Dream Show. God bless you all. God bless you all. There are 3 billion people alive today who still have limited to no access to know about Jesus. Most live in the 1040 window. This is the rectangular area 10 degrees north and 40 degrees north latitude, extending from North Africa through India, the Middle East, and Asia. For over 20 years, Global Hope India has been empowering local churches throughout India to provide access to Jesus. You can make a difference now at globalhopeindia.org. Thank you for listening to the Living the Dream Show with Kevin White. Don't forget to visit spiritmedia.us for the Writers Club with Kevin White, a weekly small group via Zoom with writers for accountability and structure through coaching and collaboration. Visit spiritmedia.us today. Visit kevinwhite.us and join thousands of subscribers to Kevin's free daily one-minute motivation series called Generously Blessed. Kevin's books, Audacious Generosity and Get to the Point, are available in hardback, paperback, ebook, and audiobook at kevinwhite.us, worldwide on Amazon, Barnes and Nobles, and everywhere books are sold. Your five-star review on Amazon will be greatly appreciated. This has been Living the Dream with Kevin White. Find the complete archive of all episodes at kevinwhite.us or subscribe for free through your favorite podcast player and never miss an episode. This program is copyright Kevin White International Incorporated. All rights reserved. Each week we bring you a message of living the dream as people of every nation, tribe and tongue worship Jesus together on earth today as it already is in heaven. Remembering the gift of God's presence through Jesus Christ is accessible to everyone. Join us again next week for Living the Dream with Kevin White. <laughs>